In this video, I'm covering the PC graphics settings for Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl. I've played the entire main story multiple times, testing every graphics setting in a variety of game conditions, so I can tell you with extreme confidence which settings meaningfully affect the experience and which do not. And spoiler alert, almost all of them don't matter. The graphics settings for this game are incredibly strange. The only settings that you really need to care about are textures, shadows, effects quality, and hair. And honestly, compared to textures and shadows, nothing else actually matters. So if you're just looking for optimization help, I'd say set shadows preferably to high, set textures to medium if you've got a card with only eight gigabits of VRAM and high otherwise, and then set literally everything else to the lowest settings and use upscaling and frame generation and make sure if you've got NVIDIA Reflex, it's enabled in the settings. That's the best you can do at the moment. Normally, I'd prefer to give detailed breakdowns of the performance cost of each individual setting, but because the game is so poorly optimized currently, that's impossible. I've seen people try to do benchmark videos for this game, but I don't trust their data at all. When I measured individual settings over hours of gameplay with my uh, 3070, none of them registered as having any impact. There's too much bottlenecking to get accurate readings. Now, the frame rate swings around wildly, so if you measure one setting in one area for a few minutes, it can seem like certain settings have certain performance costs, but um, that's just random fluctuation in my opinion until this game is properly optimized getting accurate per setting performance costs is just not possible So all I can do is tell you which settings really matter and you can prioritize those and disable the rest And I think that's going to give you the best experience So shadows are by far the most important the setting controls the distance at which objects start casting shadows The maximum resolution of shadows and how quickly shadows transition to their maximum resolution Because of the dynamic time of day and weather systems you get lots of moving shadows in this game and if they're low resolution, they look really bad. In contrast, high shadows separate out different pieces of geometry from the environment and accentuate how smooth their edges are. This game has a lot of triangles to be sure. So having shadows set to high makes every frame of the game look more stable and detailed and just makes the game look really good overall. The effects quality setting affects a variety of particle effects. In this flame anomaly, for example, turning the effects quality to high adds a heat wave effect. In grenade explosions, you seem to get more dense and higher resolution smoke textures and more importantly, you seem to get more dust clouds and leaves blowing through the environment, which adds noticeable atmosphere to the game. Uh, but this setting scales pretty smoothly, so you can put it to whatever you want. And if you have to set it to low, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, the hair setting adds strands to NPC hair. I'm showing the most dramatic example in the game on screen. It's just a few main characters that have detailed hair like this. Most people are wearing helmets or have uh, short military cuts. So while this setting works, uh, you almost never have an opportunity to notice the difference that it makes. The foliage setting adds more small grasses and mosses. So you'll notice on the right side of the screen, you see less of the ground texture than on the left side of the screen. It's more covered. It's kind of subjective if having more grass actually looks better or not. It's not super noticeable in most areas, so having the foliage setting on low doesn't make a huge difference. This setting also makes foliage pop in a little bit sooner, but this is not really a good trade-off for uh, the performance that you would expect to lose. The sight lines are so long that you see exactly the same amount of pop-in, no matter what. The fact that the pop-in happens sooner doesn't reduce how distracting it is. So this is basically just an aesthetic setting. You know, if you think the ground looks better with more grass on it, you can set this to higher, but it, it's really not that important. The global illumination setting, you usually doesn't do much that's meaningful. The lumen lighting looks noisy in a lot of areas, no matter what level you set this to. Upscaling artifacts can accentuate the noise a little bit more, so if you're if you're looking to diminish that, it might be better to just like use a better upscaling quality. Because this setting has to do with indirect lighting, it only really matters when you're indoors in diffuse daylight lighting conditions, and its effects are usually pretty marginal. I'm showing you the most extreme example I could find, and honestly, I think it's more just different than strictly better looking. In theory, this should be one of the the more expensive settings, you know, once once the game is properly optimized. So personally, I would leave it at low. Uh, shading quality affects ambient occlusion, shadowing around sharp corners. So in this game, this is something you almost never get an opportunity to see. Uh, even at its strongest, it's a very subtle effect, and you're only going to see it if you're indoors during the daytime and there's not a storm outside and there's no artificial light source in the scene, including your own headlight. So you almost never get an experience to see it, and when, when you do, it's really subtle, so it's, it's hardly worth mentioning, and you really don't need it at all. You can just have this at the lowest setting. The material setting affects how materials interact with light and can make the lighting a little more realistic in some scenes, but I'm showing you the most extreme example I could find. Yeah, again, this, this particular scene is just strangely lit in general. It might be broken, to be honest, but assuming it's not, again, I'd say the material change is more just 
different and strictly better looking or or more real looking. Um, in 99% of the places I tested this, uh, the material setting makes no perceivable difference. The caveat is that if you run the game with low quality textures for some reason, then it actually makes a really big difference, um, especially on rock and skin textures. But as long as you have textures at medium or higher, this is basically a placebo setting. And speaking of placebo settings, the reflection setting slightly very slightly increases the resolution of screen space reflections. At a typical viewing distance like this one, you're getting the exact same experience regardless of settings. I suspect that due to the unusually large amount of screen space reflections in the game, there's just so many puddles lying around, a meaningful increase to the resolution just isn't practical from a performance perspective. You know, a 1% increase on 100 different puddles that are visible in the scene is just really expensive. And so the reflection slider has an unusually limited range. So it technically does something, but it basically does nothing you might as well just set it to low um, and the remaining effects are too subtle for me to even document either i wasn't sure they actually did anything or i was sure they didn't do anything even when in theory they definitely should so for example the object detail setting should affect the distance at which small geometry details pop in like the pipes and things seen here right I mean, that's what the setting does in most games but in my testing i couldn't find anywhere where it actually made any difference to the pop-in range um, fog post-processing clouds sky environmental draw distance depth of field. In 100 hours of gameplay, I simply could not tell you what these do, if indeed they do anything at all. I've seen people claim they work in other videos, but a lot of these things are specific to dynamic weather events, and it's not really possible to replicate the exact game conditions between when you toggle these settings on and off, especially if you restart the game in between. So I think other people might just be imagining things, if I'm being honest. This game is so buggy and unstable, I wouldn't be surprised at all if um, all these other settings were simply broken at the moment. In any case, you can safely ignore them. Again, shadows and textures matter. Everything else is not. The game is graphically really weird.